goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. Our guest tonight is pretty much damn near fourth partner. Partner, um, he's literally hung with us for a whole show already, and uh, he back with us for the first time again. Um, we have brother Lucas Oliver from Baby Boys Bulls, um, and he came to us. Uh, Face made this connection for us, and uh, we are really blessed to have him here. Um, Face, how, how did we meet our guest tonight? Well, first and foremost, if anybody's ever um seen the thumbnail of face uh yeah I only see kj my dog and that's where i met lucas at lucas is a dog breeder also owns a kennel some close personal family friend and being that i'm trying to get in the field he's somewhat of a mentor to me in this field so i figured why not bring him on and let him share his knowledge with the world as well and also get some promotion in for his business in the black business corner so, for no further ado, uh, I welcome Lucas Oliver, owner of Baby Boys Bulls, to the Partners Podcast. Hey, guys. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Indeed, Happy man. We, we appreciate having you, man. Uh, thank you for being willing to share your time uh, twice now. Um, and being, just, just being willing to come in and uh, share your um, knowledge, your information, um, and teach us a little bit tonight. Um, a lot of us and our listeners um, are actually, you know, dog owners or pet owners, and we're, we're into dogs, or, you know, we even have some people out there that are into, you know, breeding, whether it be for personal or, you know, for commercial reasons. So we're really hyped to have, you know, an expert in the building tonight to, you know, just drop some gems and teach us and, you know, just give you a chance to just share your story and share your platform so we can get people out there, you know, a resource on how they can get plugged into the breeding world and get them some dogs and, and, and get that information. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Brother Lucas. Um, and I'm happy to be here. I ain't no expert, but, you know, we all need some knowledge, and if I got it, I'll spread it. Right on, brother. Appreciate you, King. All right, so um, let's get right into it, guys. Um, let's start at the beginning, man. When... How did you become a breeder by trade? What made you choose that as your profession and, and, and what you do? Uh, I was a little kid. I was real mischievous and stuff, man, and I had some books. It's nice to read. And instead of getting in trouble, we had to uh, write book reports. And I used to always mm. pick this, this, this book up that was all about dogs, from, like, the beginning of cavemen to how they domesticated the first wolf puppy all the way to how they bred and made a Maltese to warm your feet up kingdom. You know what I mean? So wow. that was interesting to me because that was like science before I knew what science was. You know what I mean? Right, right. Hell yeah. You're actually learning biology and genealogy and genetics and all that. Yeah, man. And then a fast forward part of that story was uh, I had a cousin. He went through some misfortune. Where he got had to go take a little vacation, but he was like, go get a dog. And when he told me to go get the dog, he also told me to go get the paperwork because mm. before that I'm from a rural in Virginia. So the paperwork was like, what is paperwork? So uh, he, uh, his girl gave me the paperwork, man. And I had an open class, which was like a library worker or whatever. And bro, I literally went to school for like six months and just typed in every day on the same computer. I, I just researched the dogs and I just took my research further and further and just always had a dog or, or Somebody would always bring me around a dog. Luke, I got this dog. Come see it. Hey, man, that's nice, man. We should hit that with this. And we should try this right here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Wow. So uh, it's, it's literally been part of your life since day one almost. Um, yeah, I had a dog since I was like 15. Oh, wow. So pretty much since, you, since your whole formative life and adult life, you've been in it. So you can yeah, see, right. people, that this is not somebody that just woke up and started doing this yesterday. You know, I mean, we bringing you the best of the best here. Um, when you pick your breeds, or when when it comes to when you wanted to start your business, how did you pick what breeds you wanted to focus on? Mm, I always liked the uh, when I started, like when I was younger, it was the pit bulls, and I used to notice that they was like. When I looked online and stuff, they was like a little bit more stockier. Their structure was different. They had more bows, more. I'm like, why we? So, 
I just made it a thing like if I could ever get my hands on it, and I made it. I was, you know, one of them things in the back of your head, like you're a little kid. You're like when I get older, I'm gonna buy that car. I was like, mm. when I get older, <laughs> I'm gonna make my yard look like this stuff I'm looking on the internet at 2000 and 2002 or something like that. I was like, I want wow. those dogs. So you literally was dreaming about that in, in school. Wow. Um, yeah, bro. Drawing and my all the heads of all my cartoons used to look like dogs. I don't know. It was just dogs. <laughs> no, no lie, bro. My brother's like four years older than me, and my sister's like seven years younger than me. So it wasn't like when I was at home. On I had a dog, and I used to play sports, and it was a pit bull at the time. And bro, he used to work out with me like. I used to run like five miles, just let him off the leash, bro. We could run anywhere. I could ride a bike. He was right beside me. I was by myself, so my dog was my best friend. Damn, that's like some DMX shit right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you feel me? Said that. Rest in peace. Sir. Right. Yeah, yeah, rest yeah. In, rest peace. in peace, man. That's dope, though, man. Um, now that you're in the profession. What are some of your biggest challenges that you face as a breeder? Uh, I'm getting more. All right, right now I'm doing, like, I started with, like, XLs and standards, which is more like a pit bull with a bit, little bit stockier. Mm-hmm. And they was pretty cool, and that was kind of easy to breed. But then I, I'm learning the evolution of the dog game, which is more exotic. And that whole process of, it's a learning process, bro. That's why it's like, you know what I mean? Like, everything right. is a different lesson. Just learning the bloodlines and what's real and what's fake and, and, and really looking at the dog and know it's not going to throw what that dog looks like. It's going to throw his grandparents. But that takes a lot of trial mm-hmm. and error between either me and other parties or somebody else, and they can be consistent. But it's just a lot of trial and error in it, man. And it's just it's a learning thing, just period. Got you, got you. Um, this is a little bit, you know, off, but um, I heard you say something in there where you were like, you know, how to tell what's real, what's fake. When you saying that, do you mean like the dog is fake, like somebody's um selling or promoting that they have a breed that's not actually what it is, or do you mean like paperwork's fake? What did you mean by that? All of what you just said above, bro. I don't mm. that that's all of that, bro, is part of the dog game, and like that's why, like, I tried to. I personally try, and the people I deal with, I try to make sure we, like, own our business. Like, I get called, my girl, my job, I don't have a job, but I have a job. My 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 dogs pretty much run. I get on the phone at, like, 8 o'clock in the morning, bro, and I'm. it's anything from, hey, did you send your paperwork off? Hey, Luke, I don't know how to do that. Well, look, I'm going to be over a little bit later, help you fill that out. Hey, Luke, mm. uh, dog, uh, was some some. hey, look, I don't really know that one. Take it to the vet. Uh, Luke, uh, but like we were just saying with the uh I learned like later on when you start doing things, man, you just gotta know when you when you start getting into something, you start to know certain things. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, a lot of yeah. older heads side and kinda like, you know, this is what happens right here. And I was like, All right, so then instead of somebody pulling the wool over my eyes, they let me open my eyes so I could see what's really going on. Cause when I was younger, I was buying a lot of dogs and the dogs I was producing wasn't the type of dog that I was promised to get. Mm. That's when I found mm. some things were what people said they were. So I just scrapped mm-hmm. it a couple times, started over. You know what I mean? Not saying how it, how I would know or anything, but that sounds like you know when you're in the drug game and people be out there selling dummies or, bur- or burners. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. You know, mm-hmm. how, um, but, what, the, uh, but the, with the dog did. version, basically. Yeah, what the boy did there I said, man, look, if you're gonna step on that shit, you can call it whatever the hell you want to call it. Don't call that shit my shit, but. I don't speak on it too hard because you can't knock people for doing what they did because without them doing what we did, we wouldn't be where we are now. So you can't mm-hmm. be mad at them. You see what I'm saying? So it was one of them things like something when I first, oh man, it was, then when I really learned it, it was more one of those things like, shit, I'm glad they did it because goddamn the dogs look cool as shit now. You know mm. Hell yeah. <laughs> Some bullshit comes progression. Indeed. Indeed. Good point, Faith. Um, Luke, what is all right? So I got two questions. You can eat you can pick either one to answer, whichever one you feel like answering. <clears throat> um what is either what is something that would surprise most people about dogs that maybe only breeders would notice? 
or what are some major misconceptions about dogs or dog breeding that would surprise people? I'm going to go with the second one. Right on. Probably the, uh, the people wouldn't know when I'm trying to get into it. It's the, the traveling, the money, the losses, sleepless nights, vets, arguments with your spouse because it's going to be stressful. You know mm. what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's a job, bro. It's not something that you can turn off at 5 o'clock. You see what I'm saying? You can't turn okay. off a dog. You see what I'm saying? You're dealing with a living being. And like I said, with these different dogs, you get different ailments and, and allergies. And why is your eye swollen? Why is your leg swollen? Why are you, you know what I mean? And we're not yeah, that's shit I, I wouldn't even thought about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. It's, it's different. Uh, a guy, one of my guys today was getting on Facebook today and was like, all the losses that he took. He, you know what I'm saying? Made him want to quit. And then he hit me in my inbox. And, boy, that boy, 100,000 in the dogs right now. And some big breedings didn't take. So you would think that it's easy. Oh, I'm going to buy this dog. And I'm going to do this. And, bro, it don't work like that all the time. And you don't mm-hmm. get none of the money driving to the vet. You don't get your time back. You don't get your yeah. money that you put for the own test. You don't put get the money back for the The more losses and invest where well, they supposed to be investments, but they may become a a loss in the long run, you know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. That's, That's all a part of the business. You know. That's all a part of any any business venture or you're going to do it for yourself. You're going to take a loss, though, or you possibly have that, that possibility of taking a loss when you go into business. But then with the dog game, what I'm saying, just from talking to you, it, it has to be more of a realization because your losses can come from many different angles when dealing with a living creature. Right. Absolutely. Uh, Face, you got some questions? Oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely. You know, I'm I lined up with mine. Now, my first one, my first question to you, Luke, comes right right in the ethic of breeding. Now, most people don't know, but there's two different ways of breeding. Um, with the dogs, you got artificial insemination and natural, just like with humans. Now, in your perspective, which method do you find better, and does it matter which which way is used? Mm. Every dog is his own deck of cards. I'm saying like that because I could tell you to do a surgical and the surgical don't work. I could tell you to do natural and the natural didn't work. You know what I mean? And plus mm-hmm. the different when we playing, uh, like I was saying before, this is what I learned about the dog game and this old dude, it was a couple old guys that gave me them old, uh, like them, them questions that uh, Mr. Miyagi asked Daniel, son. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So one of them was like, uh, uh, when you're doing like dog breeding, we play in God or whoever you pray to because I'm not like crazy about religion, but like whoever you see is the higher power. Mm-hmm. Bro, you in something that wouldn't naturally in nature go together when you make some of these dogs. You know I'm saying with some of these bigger structured dogs or some of the dogs are so short that they can't really naturally tie. So in the wild, mm-hmm. they really wouldn't. Re- so we're playing God, putting this dog with this dog, and you know what I'm saying? So right, some yeah. things go right, and some things do go right, and you need time with it, man. You need, like, all the dogs in my yard right now are something that I, I bought the mothers, and then I produced everything that's on my yard right now because I know what I have, and I'm producing to get – I got a vision. I'm giving myself a three- to four-year window, four window to produce exactly what I see is my version of a perfect dog. Mm. Mm. You know how sad that would be as a human to not be tall enough to make to to get it in with your wife. Like, that's so sad. That's so sad, man. I feel bad for the dog, hey, man. Look, like, look, damn, look, man, you look, 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 it ain't on, even your on, fault. Look. You just can't get up there. Oh man. Oh, oh no. somewhere in the world. Hold on, I had a mechanic, right, and he had a doctor, and he had a female pit bull, and she laid down for my boy. <laughs> she said, oh, I can go missionary for you, big dog. I got you. Mm. She just laid in the side. early morning. Just put a leg over. Hey, <laughs> that got to be the funniest thing ever to see. Dog <laughs> just, just say, oh, oh, was, oh, oh, this ain't going to work. Hold on. I got you. <laughs> oh, I seen a little, it was like a little brindle dachshund body with a pit bull head, but it was like skinny because it was a dachshund. It was weird, bro. Oh, that's like, crazy. It was, it was, it was a it cartoon was, character. 
Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like some shit somebody dropped. Oh shit. That's <laughs> Yeah, my, second dark question, dog. my second question comes in respect of dog births. Now, is it true that dogs can have C-section too? And why, why not? Some, like I just said, it don't even matter because I had a guy tell me the other day, it was like he lost the whole litter because he thought his dog was big enough to push out. But it's just like, just think about it like women, bro. And this is the best way I've learned to deal with my dogs, for real. Women and kids, you got to do kind of the same thing because, like, some women can't naturally push out a kid that would kill them. Mm. It's the same thing with dogs. It goes back to the last thing I just said. We're putting some things together that shouldn't probably really, – well, they wouldn't have naturally went together. I'm saying that way. It shouldn't not go together. But they wouldn't naturally go together. So their hips may not be big enough to bone of the puppy that's coming out. Some females – uh I was balling them up or making them bigger. Their insides aren't right. Their uh, birth canal may not be angled correctly. Their uh, mm. cervix may not no, bro. Like It's still like anatomy now with these dogs. Bro. It's really like, it's, it, the more I learned and the more I got into it, and I was like, wow, you really got to get like a C-section. Like somebody really got to cut the dog over. Right. I walked in the house one night and this guy was like a street vet. He had a dog laying on his table, bro, passed out, cut the dog open, got the puppies, dog woke back up. I was like, wow, bro. And then your family about to eat. What the, the hell? Yeah, that was like, that's why I, I said. I didn't even know uh, you could have a street vet for a dog. Like, what? I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, see, that's one of the things about being like, I got to go behind some doors, bro. Like, this dog thing, like, it's crazy. Because, like, you know how, like, you know how some rappers, They've been around for a long time, and they was with this person. Like two chains was back with Ludacris and all that, and mm-hmm. then finally he got mm-hmm. he had to get burned and, and and find out that certain things wasn't what they was. And it's basically the same thing with the dog game. It's the same thing, bro. It's the same exact thing. It's just you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed, that's crazy. It's like nothing. Yeah. C sections and dogs, like the the, the, mm-hmm. the juxtaposition, like the connection to like how close. You think that's are. bad, bro? You know, like when we, you all right, asked me about inseminations. To get that insemination time correctly, you have to take the female to the vet two to three times to get a progesterone test. You know the progesterone test. Just like uh, with your woman. See it. Yes, which you want to see what Yeah, hell yeah. So you got to take it. So we might spend. We might just spend five hundred dollars in progesterone test. That's maybe luckily two of them to get us in the window, and then still got to now collect from the mail. Then have to inseminate. And if you do it all at the vet, because you can't do it personally, all that's bread. And that's that money that I was telling you. It's just hopefully, if the dog takes and you make your money back, that was an investment. But if it don't take, all of that money is not recap. You see what I'm saying? That's why I said if anybody just trying to jump in for like money, bro, ah, this ain't what it is, bro. This this ain't what you do. This ain't them guys that you see on Facebook and Instagram that's 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 willing and dealing, but them boys finally got real estate and some more stuff behind them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. and I'm not it's saying like a labor of love for real. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying you can't do that, but don't let's not all be fooled by like Instagram and Facebook and, and, and social media. <laughs> it's not just an easy thing, bro. I'm telling you. Anything right. worth doing will be hard, shit. Big facts. Now, my next question. What are some mistakes that you you made when you first started? Everything. From dog <laughs> food to uh, thinking I could do a natural tie and I should have did insemination, mm-hmm. thinking I didn't need a professor on test to uh, leaving a dog outside and the temperature was too high and she absorbed the puppies. Uh, mm. Wow. Yeah, a little small. Bro, she was in shade. Would you would have if you would have came to my house, you'd been like, that dog is fine. But the vet told me it was like if she would have been like in the crib, just relaxing, but it was so hot by the body sweating and, and needing nutrients and stuff, it took from the puppies first because they won't develop. Uh, mm. oh wow. Mm. Uh, I, man, that's cra- that just blew my mind. All right. Yeah, it's uh uh, not giving a dog enough uh, folic acid, aka prenatal, because their body was missing something and the dog didn't take. Uh, mm-hmm. 
boy, we like I said, man, I could just go on and on and on and on and on. It's it's, it's trial and error, man, and each dog is his new deck of cards. It's his own enigma. Right on. I tell you, I got a dog, and every time I breed her on the third day, she take. I bring oh, wow. my dog on the third, seven, the eighth, the ninth. That bitch still ain't. Excuse me, but the dog still ain't take. You feel me? No, yeah. you know you good. Uh, this is an adult show, so you're all good, buddy. Shit, you know, man, we don't mind. We don't mind adult words here. Face on here, so I, I, I do. And the face, face, face is little yeah. more than a, a few flies. So we good, buddy. Yeah, I have a segment called fuckery. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're under eighteen. Good. You should be listening to us anyway. Yeah, we all we all over thirty five over here. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. So my next question, it won't on the line that we sent to you, but just off the top of my head, I know you breed American bullies right now, but if you had a dream, if you can put two dogs together that could be your dream pair, what mm-hmm. breed would you put together? None of them. Hmm. I told you I read that book when I was little, bro. And every dog was built for a purpose. Mm-hmm. And I do cross breeds, and they got like the fluffy and cheese and stuff of that nature now, which is yeah, never wrong. Yeah, it's but all right now, like don't get it twisted because I ain't mad at nobody for doing it, like I said, because the Labradoodle is a better retriever dog, and they actually did the Labradoodle for people that got allergies because poodle hair doesn't have the uh, allergenic quality mm-hmm. of the hair. Mm-hmm. Just like they did, uh, it's another one with the Shih Tzu and Pomeranian, I want to believe, whatever yeah. I call them. But they did that because one of the types of dog's hair isn't the one that fucks with people allergies. So they did that so somebody with allergies could have that dog. So for that Got type it. of joke, bro, all of that's cool with me, but like, I'm a dog breeder, bro. So like, I didn't see, I am see that's probably not a thing. I didn't see crosses and shit like that before. So me more now, I'm more like just going to the shows, bro, and seeing real purebred dogs be the best confirmation mm-hmm. dog to be. You feel what I'm saying? Because, like, mm-hmm. I'm doing exotics, and it's two ways. It's either super clean or there's a little bit dirty. So, like, my own yard, I got Easties and Westies, and I found that I got one dog with hip dysplasia. So learning to work with, okay, now I know she needs to not – I can't breed her now. So now I got – all right, this dog got a little – and I got it. That's why it's still fun to me. But – Sometime it be, you know what I mean? Uh, you know what I'm saying? But as far as mixing something, I don't know. My favorite dog, like I told y'all the other night, like, I really just want to, I think when I get right, right, in a big crib and got some land, just let a big-ass dog run, I'm going to get that doggy boy out. Yeah, Damn, Folks, boy. you ain't never seen that thing. <laughs> the big is a piece of work. Uh, check uh, Tom Hanks. Was what was it? Yeah, okay. Tom Hanks. Turn Turn on. Turn on. Turn on. Yeah, well, 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 Hooch, that's what he talking yeah. about, that big ass dog. Yeah. <laughs> that big yeah. ass slobbery dog. That, yeah. is, that that's big as a that's bigger than a man. Mm-hmm. Not, I tell you what, ain't nobody coming to your house to try to do nothing, boy. Mm-mm. We'll have them for dinner. Hell no, no, that big ass dog. All right, that nigga big as a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, you gotta look and see like what what like see this is why I said like with that question, like I read those books back in the day. So in that book wasn't just like bullies that I'm reading. It was like the confirmation for Rottweilers, uh Australian Shepherds, uh Belgian Malinois, uh it was different stuff in there, bro. And then all it was like <clears throat> that and then there y'all just made me remember. Uh, back in the day when they had the uh, the USA, it was a part called Animal Channel or Animal Planet or something, bro. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, they had a dog show that was called Breed All About It. And every it was 30 minutes about one specific breed, bro. I remember that. And they tell you about like, yeah. uh, like the history of it, what it could do, the health stuff or something. So that to me, think about me, man. I think I read that. When I used to watch that, it was like a little quick quiz for me to see if I still remember. All right, a Dalmatian was bred. To, oh, right. Doom, 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 doom. You feel what I'm saying? And like, right. it was one of them. Like a game show, like your own personal game show. Mm-hmm. It was like flashcards oh, for him. 
there you go. And probably I forgot to tell y'all this part too. My mom didn't like dogs, bro. So I couldn't oh, have wow. one when I was real small. Mm. When I was real small, I couldn't have one. So reading about one was like the next closest thing I could do or watch a movie. Home with Brown or, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everything you had to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Hey, yeah, look, yeah. Fast forward, like 20 years later, I got a dog inside of her house and it lives inside of the house and she wouldn't take a dollar for it. And it's one of my productions. Yeah, it works. Oh, wow. I like that. That's so crazy. Okay. You done turned her. You done, you done turned her into a dog <laughs> person. You could I, I, I helped out with a dog show about a month ago. And we was using, like, my mom's house as, like, you know, one of the meeting spots. And my homeboys got these little nano dogs, bro. And they was pulling them out of, like, they got the little dogs that coming out of bags and stuff. If you check my mm-hmm. page, you'll see what I'm about. So when he pulling into this stuff, she was like, so you mean to tell me they could fit in my, they could fit in a Gucci bag? And I was like, yeah, mom. She was like, I need one. My mama want a Frenchie, <laughs> so I'll probably get a Frenchie in like six months. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, my mom, Deuce, like I'm telling you, bro, like she went from like, the people I got around me now, bro, I went through a situation where I had another situation where that person didn't really want to deal with the dogs because it took away from the attention on them. People I'm with now was like, hey, Luke, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. And, and Damn, right. my mom, girl, mm-hmm. like, keep it. Her kids, which is my light skin kids, is what I call them, because I don't like saying step or you know what I'm saying, nothing like that. So yeah. it's all uh, like everybody, like boom, like let's go, let's go. So my mom even with it now. She's like, look, I need a Frenchie now. I need something I can put in my bag and we can put it in. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And and it's funny, like watching this natural aspect and like my family. I used to tell them, and they knew I like dogs. And I used to ride with a dog. But now said like a lot of my family members. I got one of my cousins I go stop by. He'd be like, Man, I'm gonna tell you, you make dog breed look so far. He's starting to watch on YouTube look up kennels and stuff. He like, Luke, whenever you wanna work on something, send me one. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. And I got That's dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm like, 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 send me one, I got you. My uh my like I said, my mom said holler at her. I got my a lot of my family members are the people that You already know my friend. Boom. So, I, well, you know, I got the dog. Boom. Come on, let me. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's, it's just, it's, that's, that's more the thing that I be feeling like that blessing. And it's crazy because I be sitting back like, yo, I remember being little and just trying to get a dog. And now I'm sitting here like, man, I got 13 dogs in the backyard. I got like mm. five females. Figure out who I'm going to breed. What, what's better? I'm making new friends. And, uh, and these guys told me I can use this stuff for this much. And this one, and I'm like, but damn, it's about to be fun for the next couple of years. You feel me? Mm-hmm. All about the people that surround you. Man, now, my, you Luke, question, the game. my last question I got for you, Luke, is more into the either or thing. Now, being your breeder, I know you, you do um, you know, ladies and you got your men over there, too. But as somebody just getting into the game, I'm looking at just being it's not far as breeding and having the females because I don't want to deal with females. My wife probably do that on her own. But I'm thinking about just studying KJ and then eventually getting another male just doing a little studying thing. What do you think about that? My encouragement to you would be whatever you feel like that you can network and promote the best. And just know the keywords I just said, network and promote the best. That fits mm-hmm. in your avenue. That's one of them things when people say, you, you, if you think the stud lane is for you, bro, rock with it. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Rock. Mm-hmm. See, me personally, I like the whole, remember I just told you, I ain't had dogs now, I'm little. So mm-hmm. I like the process of dropping a litter, bro, and whelping it. Here and there, I don't like when I really lose a puppy, but if I could, hey, I see that one slipping and I give it a little something, the next thing I know, that motherfucker six months old looking at me, I'm like, bitch, you almost died on me one night. Here. Right. Look how mm-hmm. I you saved your me? life. Yeah. Look at how I kept the looking in the box, bitch, you was in the corner. In the corner. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I didn't save a dog that was in the mother's mouth. I was like, oh, shit, she about to eat it. That means usually the dog's no good if the mother tries to eat it. I saved the dog. Oh, wow, yeah. That motherfucker in my backyard now, you know what I mean? 
Mm. Yeah, man. Well, well Pat, you know I saved you from being food. <laughs> 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 you know what that reminds me of? That's that scene from Guardians of the Galaxy. With a uh <laughs> yeah, with Yandu. in the beginning. In the beginning. Yandu right? yeah, said yeah, that the um bro. Star Lord, you know, these boys mm-hmm. are gonna eat you. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I saved you. I saved you from being eaten. <laughs> the way you said it, you sounded just like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you you uh you know your questions, Faith. Oh yeah, man, that's all I got for Lou for this uh, this round. All right. All right. Well, um, my first question. Uh, I would say, what's your best or worst experience that you've had so far breeding? Hmm. The gift and the curse is people. The gift and the curse. Sounds like my job. Yeah, Yeah, like, (laughs) yeah, man, it's just just like any other business and anything. But like I said, every time that I took a, a loss or somebody burnt me or something, it made me better in another aspect. It's like playing chess until you learn how to really play chess, you're going to lose. Right. And then when you go play somebody else, you're going to be able to maneuver a little bit different and know you ain't, you shouldn't leave your back door open like that no more. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that, I got a guy now that like owes me for a pup, but I'm when I met him, we was cool. And now all of a sudden we, you come on, you know what I'm saying? But I can't go crazy about it. It was my fault because I let you get away from me without giving me my money. So mm-hmm. the next time, now I know I need contracts and make sure all my money is in my pocket before I do business with, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, right. you know what I mean? Learn uh, the good thing about that. Yeah, but exactly. Uh, Bring me my hand, money. We'll yeah, smack my hand, won't do it again. But uh, just like that right there, I tell that to a couple other breeders, bro. I got like, and then the good side of that is, bro, like, you never know, bro. Like, just answering a phone call when I went to a show one night. And my homeboy was like, hey, come chill with me, bro. I go to chill in a hotel. Not a hotel, but a a bistro that's owned by some successful dog breeders in Florida. It's like three of them. And then I look over at the table with my homeboy, and it's like eight more. And I'm like, oh, wow. snap. Like, and it was one of those, like, everybody, hey, my name's such and such and such and such and such and such. And I'm like, all right. So you in the room with the key players in your industry. Yeah, so because like I've been sat down and did my research, so I've been I know faces, but I'm like, hold on, real quick, hey bro, come here real quick, let's go to the car, and I go to the car, and I'm like, hey bro, you gave me first name, is that such and such and such and such and such and such and such? And such, and such? He was mm-hmm. like, yeah, bro, I've been kicking it with him all day. Well, shit, let's go get fucked up, shit. You know what I'm saying? And right. that right there, just being like, and not even being a, I'm not a person to like kiss nobody ass or them, but I respect them dudes, and I I let them know I respected them. Bro, now I could call and they, Luke, you need to come to Florida next month. Luke, you need to be in Texas this week. Luke, you need to be in California in, in November. You need to be, right. like, and it's to the point that I'm like, and they just calling me and I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like, and they the always said, me. don't hang with the people that's on your level. I try to get with people that's either, and that's a little bit higher than you so you can learn and, you know, that shit you rub off on you and fuck up their good habits. <laughs> Table where I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna have my ears back and I'm gonna be looking and I'm gonna have a notepad going down. Like, what people don't know is like, I went to school, but I, I didn't think I wanted to go to college. I was good for just sitting in class and I could listen to everything without writing it down. Man, mm-hmm. boy, they messed up. I had a little psychology behind that. So when I'm in the room, boy, I'm listening to, and I'm, I'm trying to catch it. Drop something and watch I pick it up. Oh, go and drop it. Watch I put it in my toolbox. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting to hold it. That's real. That's, that's funny. That's, that's kind of the way I actually like learn whatever, just sitting back and listening more than to just like writing down everything or yeah. whatever. Or yeah, if I do write it, to taking notes almost distracts me from what I'm actually what I'm learning. Yeah. And the point yeah. of the whole mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. I'd rather hear it all the <laughs> way through and then maybe go back later and listen to a recording or something. And, Notes, mm-hmm. but I, I want to just listen to it the first time and soak in that information. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, my um my second question is that uh, is there certain breeds of dogs that can't be uh, bred, or is there others that's like they 
they can't they don't breed well with others. I think you kind of already answered this question at first. Um, just just speaking, but yeah, is it like just particular breeds that just won't mix? Mm. Not really. It's more of a I would say health wise, there's some things that don't mix well, but breeds, mm. like I told you, playing God, man, they got they got some different things out there now, bro. So uh, <laughs> don't nothing go, you know what I'm saying? Because there's some. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, yeah, man. Can you imagine a dog with a pit bull head and a chihuahua body? Just leaning all over. I, Can't hold his head bro, up. <laughs> oh, sharky the shark dog, dog looking. Yeah, bro, you'd be amazed, bro. You'd be amazed, bro. Oh. Bunch of Ren and Stimpy is running around. That, uh, the, the Isle of the Dr. Moreau type shit. Just weird shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You'd be surprised. I've seen a mixture between a hot dog dog and a pit bull. Had the body of a hot dog dog. He was a blue brindle with a pit bull face. I I've seen the same thing, bro. I, seen the oh, same I don't thing. like that. It was, brindle, <laughs> it was brindle and it was uh, it had the longer body, shorter legs, and the mm-hmm. head was like bullish, but it wasn't like a bully head. It was like a Buff box dachshund head. It was like yeah. I told you the dog. A <laughs> buff dachshund. Head. <laughs> like the dog, she laid down. And she got the face. snout, but your head swollen as fuck. Man, I seen that, and I was like, so like when I seen that, that was some accidental. They had the hot dog in the house, and they had the dachshund on the chain. So when that was a mechanic dude that was working on the jump. So when I got in the bully game, and I heard and seen what some of the people did, I was like. Whew. I, it, it was. I won't like. I won't surprise. I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. I, I know I gotta watch my dogs. Make sure the wrong thing don't creep up on. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> you know, like my dogs. So like my girl. Like when the dogs I got now. Like I was big on where I got them from. I was big on where I got them from, and I'm big on what I breed them to now because of <laughs> stuff like that. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. Big head dog with a little body. Like he's walking around and his head's going first the whole time because it's so heavy. <laughs> like a bull. <laughs> like an actual bull. Oh, man. All right. Before I start the joking and forget my other questions. <laughs> Do, um, is there like certain licensing and certifications you got to have to breed pretty much? To just actually breed actual dogs, no. But depending on what level you're trying to take it to in your residential situation, mm. you would have the kennel license, and then some places you would have to have your breeder's license to get your kennel license. Or you might have to have, like, where I'm located at, all I have to have is all my dogs' rabies. I go and get, uh, what is it? I got the rabies shots that I went up town. Went to the treasurer's office, took all of that. I got a kennel license. So, like, I ain't really got to wear it. They don't mean they can come to my house and I can have up to, like, 20, I think it's 25 dogs I got. Oh, wow. But I'm in a, I'm in the country, though. So, like, right. if you live in, like, residential, I think it's, like, when I was in Hampton, it was only, like, four dogs. And you know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. So they can't get loose and, like, do something or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got nice. Nah, it's more of a thing of like space and things like because like when y'all was actually, oh like, okay you, they got to make sure the dogs have space. Yeah, like when you get to like smaller cities and stuff, bro. Like you won't want to have like the hoarder type person, something like mm, that. Or something. Oh yeah, because we've seen that shit. They be having them. The, yeah, what stuck between what a lot of people don't. Shit. What a lot of people don't think about when they get to these dogs, bro. The more dogs you get. You got to damn near be a sanitation officer, bro, because you got to really clean up behind. Y'all know y'all got one or two dogs. Imagine somebody with, like, 30. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so that's a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all, right, so, all right, so you got KJ, though, like, you know what I'm saying? You got you got KJ. That's just his poop. So imagine that shit on time. Like, I got 13, but, see, I got my kennels built where I can go outside in the morning, spray down everything once or twice a day. I can spray, and the way I got my drainage system, it drains off. But if you don't have, imagine that being 
and I got a neighbor right, right beside me. Right now, I live in a cow pasture. That's why all y'all hear is crickets in the background. I can't do that in the city. I tried to do it in the city. I had like, man, I had like five dogs, bro. I had to get everything straight. That's how I can tell you about the whole kennel breeding and everything because I had to get everything straight because you never know. Just because you can see 20 houses don't mean one of them inside the house calling, not calling the ASBCA or you or somebody, Judy down the street. Hey, he got he's black and he's got pit bulls. You know what I mean? I used mm-hmm. to stay getting the phone call from work or something. A dog done broke loose. Or, and even though my dogs went, I used to get dogs that broke loose and jumped back in the yard and just lay in the yard. <laughs> but... But you let the phone call go down. Oh my God, it's a pit bull. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's a pit bull. Right. right. Oh Dog God. just went for a walk and came back home to chill. Damn right. right. Yep. True. The stigma true. around them is terrible. But yeah, that's my situation, the more residential situation, though. Uh, but like, as far as like breeding, it just depends. Because like, it's some people, like I just said, bro. The dog game is some people just a dude could be working for NASA, bro, and just bought him a high quality dog and just wanted to breed and he could have the best dogs in the world, bro. And you'll never know about him because to him, they just his dogs in his yard. You see mm. what and it's mm, a lot of it. some people <clears throat> breed for their personal collection. Like yeah, that. bro. It was I was talking to a bigger breeder. I've been talking to him for a few days. Like when I heard about the guy, that was one of the guys that I met in Florida. And like I hear all these stories about it. I'm like, bro, they want to sell a dog. He like, what the fuck I'm gonna sell a dog for? And I'm like, why you wanna sell a dog? And he was like, What am I end up doing? Replacing the damn dog? He was like, I'm gonna get some money off of it. All right, but then in my mind, I'm gonna need to replace it with an even badass dog. So mm-hmm. I don't really his real bro, he got other money behind him that he's in real estate. He got money, money, like Gucci. Right. It's for just he really was just the sport of he just loved the dogs. Breed. And, and he just wanna that. breed the best dog and make feel he wanna make the best dog and that's really what it's about. And a lot of people it's a good thing because there's comp it's like a yo, I gotta I gotta come out with the next one. But I'm more of a person. I stay in my lane. I know what I didn't create and where I'm at right now. I know right. I ain't ready to go and, and jump in the ring with some of these lions, tigers, and bears and shit. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I ain't yeah. sure. But for what I produce and I know what I got, I know what I got. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, th- before you get to your last question, Pat, and this ain't on the uh, list, but based off of uh, just the conversation so far in general, um, God damn it, I lost it. Go ahead, Pat. Shit. <laughs> you have it. You have it. Uh, God dang. Damn, man. I really oh. wanted. To... Oh, fuck. Go ahead. Well, my last question, he kind of answered earlier with the Turner and Hooch because I said, uh, what was, what was it? Well, you said that was your favorite. Wasn't that your favorite breed, the Hooch, Turner and Hooch? That's one of the dogs that I'm look on my list when I'm probably like 50 and I don't want to do bullies no more. I just want to do something mm-hmm. different. That's probably what I'm going to oh. go get. Because that, that dog breed naturally, fucking farting puppies out and chill, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, with anything that's your own lane, who knows if anybody wants to buy those dogs. You know what I'm saying? So then I might end up with a little bit of all of them, you know what I mean? And then, true. I got my question back. Go Wait. ahead. When you when you breed, what makes you wanna uh, like? How do y'all how do y'all grade what is the best dog? Like, what's the criteria to say okay, this pit bull is a higher quality or a better model of this breed than another one? Like, how do y'all determine that? I depends on if you're looking for it to be a pit bull or a little bully because. It's not pit bulls and bullies are different. Number one, that's one of the one of the number like one wrong things too. Like a pit bull is just real. People got to look up the definition of a real pit bull. It's more of a taller dog. It's a leaner mm-hmm. dog. It's a working dog. All right, a bully mm-hmm. is a kind of dog. They add in certain things and different things to make the dog bigger or shorter, smaller, bigger head. It's more of a designer dog. So to mm-hmm. answer that question, it's more of a like. That's more of when you get in your lane, you can go to your shows. Shows are number one because you can check your dog for what it 
supposed to be. You got different classes inside of just the American bully alone. You got uh, double XL. You have an XL. You have a, a standard. You got a pocket. I think you got like a standard ex- extreme, which is basically all on like the same now because I think they change it every now and then. But different registrations have they remember what I was talking about earlier, confirmation. Mm-hmm. All right. Those shows are com- some of those shows are confirmation show. And if your dog is within confirmation, you take your dog to the show and those ribbons and, and trophies that people see, right. those are the best that's the best try here today. That's the best such and such bloodline today. That's the best such and such. Mm. It's the best that uh, and if you go, if I if I go from Florida to New York and I bust ass in everybody ring, everybody, not everybody, I'm not saying like everybody got to, but if I win a place all the way up the East Coast, it's kind of going to speak for itself that I got like a nice dog, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So that that's what the show world does. But the show in itself is like a, it's a bigger network. It's more of a like a, the show, somebody may have puppies, somebody may make leashes. Somebody does design. Somebody uh, dis- uh, somebody designs clothes. Somebody designs the tent. Somebody, you know what I'm saying? It's so mm-hmm. many different avenues. And just like me, mm-hmm. everybody more than just the dog is in front of me. So every time I make a dog friend, <coughs> that person next, so I be talking about cars and next thing. Matter of fact, the, the guy bred was since I came back in. The first guy bred when we talked today, and I was I think he about to buy a motor from me or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like we, right. it's, it's not all about the. It's like the networking and stuff too. Community. And I'm a cool yeah. person. Mm-hmm. So you be friends with person, and he got kids. Hey man, how your kids doing? And next thing you know, you, hey man, what's when you coming through? Man, man, I'm gonna come up there this weekend. All right, bring the dog with you. I right, bet that. Let's go. Right. Mm-hmm. End up being like fams out there, almost like a family yeah. reunion every time y'all see each other. And that's why I try to do like my the best way because I would like it to be a family vibe because I'm selling you a family member. Indeed. That's, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's um, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. I remember um, oh, go ahead. I, I remember one of Face's um, questions. I thought it was important too um, that he had last time. Uh, can you uh, tell us how you feel about I would say, was it raw? Was it raw meat compared to like Processed dog food. He had that oh. question one time. Mm. All right, that was more of a, a individual dog and professional owner's schedule. Like, what's mm-hmm. your schedule? If you're looking out, and your schedule has a lot to do with it. Why would you feed a dog a lot of protein if your dog really sits in the cage all day while you're at work and you let it out and then you <clears> put it back in the cage? Why would you feed that dog a high protein diet? That would mm-hmm. be like me drinking. Mm-hmm. Supplements and taking supplements and then just going to sit in the house and watch TV. I'm gonna just get big, fat, and sloppy. My bones are gonna have extra proteins. I'm probably gonna have kidney failure because I'm my my kidneys are getting burnt up with all this high protein. Um, but like I always tell anybody, raw is never a bad thing because uh, if a dog was not domesticated, it'd be a wolf and it'd be eating stuff that's dead or killing stuff to eat it with these organs and raw meat and bones and pick grass and eat berries and eat whatever right. else it felt like to eat because it was running loose in the wild. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's when those people got to look up. You got to really, a lot of things that dog breeders need to do or any, I don't give you buying a bully, pit bull, a Great Dane, a German Shepherd, a Rottweiler, really put some research and some time and see if your schedule it's acclimated to that dog and what that dog needs to be the best dog it can be. And then you got to do the research to go find a great breeder. And hopefully that breeder's not an asshole and will sit down and talk to you and, and make sure you can go to the vet and see health certificates and, and make sure that this dog doesn't have this problem. And it's, it's, it's more, it's a family member, man. You don't want to just go buy some crap from somebody and next thing you know, you, you got, you know what I mean? And then you back right. and forth to the vet. You put all this money in this dog, and now you find out it can't breed or it's got a defection or it's got a defect or this right. You know what I mean? That's just like a waste. It's like going to buy a new car, man, and it being a limit. Yeah. No yeah. more. No. 
Yeah, you don't said last that. time. You definitely um, don't want that in a living thing. True. Yeah, you you said last time you gotta find a find a dog, and I guess in any other people pet the pet that matches your lifestyle. Mm, pretty much. Yeah. The better I think take that's care of advice. Yeah. I, mean, I really said that last. That, that has yeah, more than no greyhound in your life. Do you need a, 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 a what you call it? A, what's them little Chunky dogs. No, they they like they chubby. Oh. They uh, it, uh it was on Men in Black, I think. A pug? pug. Yeah, and you really a pug, like. That's the misconception. Them little dogs, bro. Like that's why I said people gotta really do their research. Cause like them little dogs, bro. They like they hyper, but you gotta give them like the right amount and they still gotta have like, you gotta be able to bring them back in the house so they can cool back off. You can't, but they were great. When those dogs were bred, you gotta go back to where they come from. Pug, Shih Tzu, Pomeroy, any of those small dogs, those dogs used to be working in the, the kings and the those forts and stuff we see back in the day, bro. Them dogs was chasing rats and keeping little rabbits and stuff away from fucking with you at night and shit. They was working then. See now, just like people, kids want to sit in the room and play video games all day. What the hell a dog doing sitting there looking at you? Pass me on the keto with me. You know what I'm saying? And so riding like, around in Gucci bags. Okay, yeah, yeah it sounds like, <laughs> in, <laughs> not like my sister's dog. Okay, right. Right. Yeah. But that's the that's the biggest thing. If you got kids like uh go you got KJ, like I always say, my my biggest thing was with when I did and I switched my name and I said Baby Boy Bulls, I got kids of my own and my kids just naturally like this shit too. So it's like, all right, it's going to be family, but it's just natural with that. Like, even my light-skinned kids, bro, she, you, you, if you're talking to me right now, if she was up, if she was right beside me, I'd be like, what bloodlines we got on the yard? She'd have looked up the bloodlines and Googled it. She could talk to you just like I could talk to you. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, Your family biz. Yeah, bro, and, my, and I got a son. I got a junior, bro. He can take any dog. He don't care if it's your dog, my dog. He would take your dog and attempt to stack it. The best way he God gave him birth because he's seen it before. He thought it was the coolest thing. And then I got my baby boy who would just, he don't care about stacking a dog or nothing, bro. But you would find him and a puppy up under a blanket in the floor somewhere <laughs> asleep. He just loves dogs. You know what I'm saying? I got another right. son, bro. He, he he, they they all just like, Dad, let me walk the dog. Let me, they just, it's, it's that. And then I use it to, hey, kid, take the dog to, for a walk. So then next thing you know, you mentioned this one, that the dog need to be walked two hours, every two hours. So next thing you know, the door keep opening up. And the kid walking the dog. And next thing you know, you earn some responsibility. Okay. All right. Yeah. You're paying attention. Indeed. And it's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Respect, man. Uh, y'all got any more questions for the king, man? I damn time. sure learned a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah like yeah. dogs are like just like people, dude. Hey man, like, you run home next week. If you in town, me and KJ come over there next week. Oh yeah. Next uh I'll be going I'm going to Georgia to the to the money train show. The what is it? The third not this weekend, but next weekend I'm gonna be gone. Bet, I'm, bet with it, um, yeah. I'm gonna try to slide over this weekend because um, my oldest be down here. She loved dog. Mm. Oh man, you know you welcome to come through, man. You know you more than welcome. Sure to you got yeah, any yeah. um any shows, events coming anytime soon? You want to promote or? Uh, yeah, I- man. Tell the people about your business. Tell the people how they can get in touch with you for your services. Like, yeah, plug yourself, man. Put your put your stuff out there, brother. All right, all right, man. It's Luke from Baby Boy Bulls, man. If you, you can look up Lucas Oliver on Facebook. You can look up uh, Baby Boy Bulls. You can look up uh, Mr. Baby Boy Bulls is my IG. But you can type in Lucas Oliver just to pop straight up. The same thing with my old lady, her name is Selena Dawn on there. You hit her Instagram, it's under Miss Baby Boy Bulls. You hit her, you can't get me, and she's going to get you directly in contact with me. Uh, just hit me on the messenger, and I'll get right back to you. Instagram, I'm working on a little bit, but if you hit me on Facebook Messenger, I'm pretty sure I'm going to catch it in the next five, ten minutes. Uh, I got 
a couple shows I'm gonna catch up with. I'm gonna be moving around, just just tap into the pages, man, and just I try to make a movie out of it, man, because I try to make it like it's a it's a movie. This is my life, so I try to show it in the in the best actual respect, in the same way that I see it. I want y'all to see it. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. working on some things behind the scenes. I'm trying to bring a real, real big show to uh, to Virginia. I'm talking to a lot of breeders from Virginia because we get overlooked a lot of times in Virginia, bro. And we got right. some fire and the same guy that's working mm-hmm. on it. And like I said, I don't even claim to have the best dogs, bro, but my other man might got something that you like. I got another man that might got something you like. I, uh, if you want different dogs, man, just hit me up. If I don't have what you got, or if I can't get you what you need, man, let me make a phone call for you, man. Like that white dog, like that dude was on the Cat Williams at one time. He said, uh, call me back. We'll try this thing again. We'll get it together. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if you get a dog, no, he can find it for you. If he ain't got it, he can get it. Yeah, man, I'm just, I'm just always been a good person. So I'm a good, I'm a good, you know what I'm saying, person in what I do, man, so you need some, or if you're trying to get a dog, man, let me know. If my dogs don't get, I got plenty of people. I could send you to Jim Worthy for XL. I could send you to Desna for a micro. I could send you to, you know what I'm saying? And I could tell right. some people to follow, teach you some different things. And I'm, I always say, like, I'm not the best at what I do, but I'm I'm working in to, to, if I can help you, I'm going to throw you the pass. You feel what I'm saying? I was always Indeed. good with being the shooting guard. I ain't want to be the point guard. I want to be a shooting guard because I want to go set the screen for my other homeboy about to dunk on you. You ain't even see it. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm big on just helping everybody else out, man. But like I said, just keep everybody's eyes out, man. If, if, if it's showing, it, I ain't going to say if yeah, because it's going down. I got some big, big moves. I just don't want to speak on it too fast. Can't nobody kill a black man. Because y'all going to right there with me. You already, right there with, you already know. Oh, you already know. Uh, you right there. Yeah, that, this is not the last time or the last show that uh, you will see the partners collaborating with Baby Boys Bulls. Um, we definitely got uh, some stuff we're gonna be showing y'all as Lucas. Uh, just yeah, some big things. Big things oh, yeah. are quiet. Oh, yeah. We got a tour. We got a tour that's coming up. And y'all, we and y'all it. will just document every moment of believe that we got you. Yeah. Pretty soon we're gonna be going to this tour. We're gonna to put out there. We're gonna record a tour. Um, I'm gonna bring my dog over there and let y'all see when the man really was going over here, so y'all can see what the what the dude what the, what the, what the takes to run a, a dog kennel. Um, like you said, it, it ain't no easy business, but with hard work, you get what you, you get what you put into it. Yeah. Big facts. Yeah, Big bro. Facts. I wake up like six, seven in the morning, bro. I got one dog that had to have medicines. I had you got to take them out. You gotta. Make sure this one don't drink this or this one don't eat that. That's why I say, like, it ain't as easy as people think, bro. A, a really simple like bag a of bunch of kids. Oh. Yeah, yeah, pretty bro. Much. A simple <laughs> bag of dog food, bro, can kill a dog. It's like you can fuck down and feed the wrong kid peanut butter, bro, and fuck somebody else. Wow. You know what I mean? Man. That's yeah, another bro. thing I hadn't yeah, even yeah. thought of, like, you know, food allergies and stuff like that, but in dogs, mm-hmm. like, some you just take for granted because, mm-hmm. you know, you know yeah. dogs, so. It's all about what you know, man. You know, right. You get the dog That's why I was just looking up to YouTube and, and the dog and live. So I, I purchased from him before I even left the house. I, I left the house the original time with a, with a set of numbers. You remember so I mean? Even starting to venture off with KJ, I had knowledge from Lucas. So that it, it, it's a pleasure doing business with him on a continuous basis on here and with the dog. You remember so. Indeed. But indeed. I appreciate that. My mom said, man, you are your business. So I'm trying to make sure that I could be as so best true. I could be. You feel? Indeed. Well, y'all can follow the, the product and the customer uh, live on the partners because Face is both a customer and you always see KJ. And y'all know he's, you know, a member of the pod squad for shows. You know, he be showing up on the episodes and whatnot. So y'all already know how beautiful it's all that is. So, so you you seen the proof in the pudding. Now take yourselves on over to Baby Boys Bulls page and go ahead and check out the whole, the whole show, the whole, uh, the whole family of dogs that he has, and, and just look at how beautiful they are. And go ahead and if you were thinking about being a, a dog owner, you know what I mean. How let a man get get some knowledge on on how to make sure you're doing things the right way with him. You know what I mean. Uh, if you're looking to get into uh, the breeding game, 
you know what I mean? Who better to learn from? Um, and, and if you're looking to buy a bullet, why not from the man with the plan? Um, and, and you see, how, again, how beautiful KJ is. So you already know if, what you, the quality that you're getting. So uh, definitely, man, support Black business, support King Lucas Oliver and Baby Boy Bulls. And just, you know, let's continue to keep this black dollar circulating in our own community, man, and continue to keep learning from each other. Cause I'm damn sure I feel like I'm better uh, informed now, especially seeing as though I, you know, I definitely want to give my son a dog. So, you know, I feel like I got a little bit more information and I got a new resource to get more information. So, like True. I said, Lucas hey, yo, will be back. Well, I got yeah. Look, well, I got the sense, man. I want to tell everybody, man. I appreciate you guys, like, just letting me use your platform and just talk, man. Like I said, I ain't the best, but yo, I'm a pathway, and I can open the door if you if you need it. You know what I'm saying? So, Respect, let me man. just talk. Yeah. Anybody that's going to learn the education, bro. Like I would tell anybody, man, just do research <clears throat> before you do anything, bro. If you open a business, do research. If you do take a loan out, do research. If you do cars, do research, just do research and keep learning, man. Because if you ever stop learning, you're dying already. Respect, yep. indeed, uh, big man. facts. And uh, hey. you know, you got an open door policy over here, man. Thank you again for giving us your time. Um, and if you ever, you know, we already gonna be collabing anyway, but if you ever, you know, got some on the spur of the moment that you're doing or that you want to promote, or if you know you have like, you know, some going down with one of the people that you are, you know what I'm saying? Influencing a mentoring that needs to be promoted out there, man. You know, holler at us and we got you, bro. Same here, man. Same here. Y'all call me. Y'all got me, man. Just hit me. I'm here. You already know, bro. Um, and, and you know, that's the interview with Lucas Oliver from Baby Boys Bulls. Um, Lucas, we about to get into the rest of the show now. Um, you're welcome to stay on if you like. Or, you know, if you do have something to do, you you are free to leave. But you're definitely welcome to kick it with us and, you know, get into the fuckery, as we call it, around here. I could rock with y'all the other night, but then I had to drive six hours the other day to go Oof. pick up a few minutes. It's got bread. Mm. So the, I have to let y'all boys rock home, man. But like I said, I appreciate it, man. Always, I appreciate man. It. Most definitely, bro. Salute, man. Love like you, I said, you. open door policy, bro. You always welcome in the pod squad, man. You official, you an official part of me, so... Anytime you ever want to come back and you know drop some more knowledge or promote anything, man, you you the, you got a platform, bro. Hey, man, y'all just stay tuned, and y'all be the first people to know, man. I love y'all, man. Good night. Man. Love you too, bro. Peace, King. I appreciate, appreciate you, family. You, man. Yo. Indeed, man. So, man, y'all. Hey, my people out there that's in the dogs, like we are, we are dog people right out here. So, if you're in the dog, man, hey. We done, we done put you in with the plug now, man. You can't say we ain't we, 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 we let you know where to get the good stuff from. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, man. Thank, shout out again to Lucas, man, for just being so gracious with his time. Two nights um, on a very busy week, man. You know, we all uh, full-time employees, family people, all of that. So, you know, we definitely understand the commodity of time. So just the fact that he was willing to take time away from his family and his dogs and share it with us. Appreciate it, man. <laughs>